Hello YouTube! I know if you clicked on this video that you're either an Animal Crossing fan or a Seattle local that's beating yourself off because you guys get the best shit in the BMW. But either way, I'm happy to have you here. For those who somehow aren't either of those or who simply haven't heard, the popular social simulation game Animal Crossing recently collaborated with the Seattle Aquarium to have a crossover event based on the game's museum functions where you can donate a variety of items, including, you guessed it, fish. I'm actually kind of late to making this video because I actually went to the exhibit back in December. It is now February. Um, but they extended the dates from October to December to October to March of 2024. So I'm not, I'm not too late to make this video, right? Right? Anyways. I spent two days in Seattle for this Animal Crossing event, so I'm gonna take you on a journey so that I can show you the good, the bad, and the plain weird of this time. Good morning, world. It is six something in the morning. Time to start the Seattle adventure. Since Seattle is so close to Portland relative to the other major cities, I decided to take the Amtrak Cascades line up instead of driving because one, the train is so much com more, so much more comfortable than driving. And two, I planned to walk almost everywhere once I got there and parking in Seattle is insanely expensive. So saving myself some much needed money. Since it was almost Christmas, the train station had a bunch of Christmas blow-up displays out, uh, including one of the big man himself, and all of the Amtrak trains on the display board were marked with little Santa Claus faces, which I thought was super cute. I've traveled on Amtrak multiple times prior, mostly down in Los Angeles, but I'm always amazed by how comfortable it is. Spacious seats, plenty of room to get up and stretch, nice views, and so many Pokestops. I swore so many Pokestops on the way up and I caught so many Pokemon. Like as we were slowing down to stop at a station, you could just hit all those stops and get so much stuff. My bag was bursting open by the time we got to Seattle. And that was before like the true start of the trip had happened. It was so awesome and it didn't stop until we pulled into the beautiful city of Seattle. If you haven't been there before, the Seattle King Street Station is a really beautiful piece of architecture that I believe is in a railroad Italianette style. But it was like the most beautiful entrance you could have on the start of a weekend getaway to an island paradise in the middle of a city. Low Seattle. And hey, I woke up at 6 a.m. to go on this trip, as you might previously remember. Six something in the morning. So you bet your bottom britches. By the time that I got in Seattle, I was hungry, hungry for something to eat. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a bit of a foodie and if you give me Google Maps, I will find us one, something interesting to eat and two, something good to eat with high reviews, which is how I came across Cafe Paloma. It was a very cute Mediterranean restaurant within walking distance of the station and I am definitely planning to go back next time I'm in Seattle because oh my goodness, it was so good. I got the hummus appetizer, the lamb platter, and a little dessert of baklava. And I think that cost $40 and it fed two people. So, yes. Highly recommend going there if you're ever in the area. Now, I was only in downtown Seattle again for this one, one exhibit, okay? That was all I was there to go see. So I decided to stay within walking distance and I booked the Citizen M Hotel. Originally, when I first booked it, I thought it was a budget conscious hotel for millennial and Gen Z travelers. So when I got there, checked in, it was pretty snazzy. It had a plush bed with a TV built into the wall, these remote curtains, like blackout curtains that like they made the room pitch black. I want them in my own house, okay? 
okay? Those things are awesome, fucking awesome. And the decor was kind of like avant-garde with like people theming and a lot of rainbow LEDs. That, that hotel room was so much comfier than I thought it was gonna be. It was awesome. I paid 118 for the night. That was after tax and everything. And it was right, like right next to the water, next to the pier, within like a 10 minute walk to the aquarium, even. It was awesome, like. Train, taken, belly, full, room, acquired. All three of the essentials have been settled. Now let's get to the real meat and potatoes of this video. The Animal Crossing exhibit. I see her. She's coming, we're coming. We're coming for her. When I tell you I was so hype for this moment, because at that point I'd been planning the trip since I first heard about it, which I think was like two or three months at that point. So like, it was finally time for all of my planning to manifest into this very moment. The actual Animal Crossing crossover itself was kind of underwhelming, mostly featuring small cardboard cutouts of some of the game's characters, like Tom Nook and Isabel, and featuring some informational signs with facts about different creatures featuring bladders. Me and my boy bladders. Since I went during the week, the stamp rally wasn't really running, which that's all me, I couldn't make it during the weekend, so I'll take that fat L. I feel like they could have done more with the event, like maybe even add some more and larger cutouts of the characters, as well as add more informational signs. Also, the Animal Crossing merch that they had in the gift shop was pretty disappointing since I had already seen some of those items at a local anime shop here in Portland. So, uh, yeah, the event was a bit disappointing, but the Seattle Aquarium itself was spectacular. I, like I said, I'd never been before, and it was just an amazing experience. The touch pools for me, personally, were a highlight of that whole experience. And the outdoor areas, while not having any Animal Crossing displays whatsoever, was still really fun to explore. Oh, so oh he just pooped. He pooped! <laughs> yes! He just, he just pooped. That's great. I really love otters and I actually managed to catch the last sea otter feeding, which was awesome. Oh, um, she a bit on they totally should have added a little Pascal cutout over by the otters. I think that would have been so cute, okay? Missed opportunity to have the only sea otter character in the franchise next to the sea otters. Okay, come on. Come on, do better Animal Crossing. Do better Nintendo. Come on. After spending nearly four hours in the aquarium, I was hungry for some food. And I don't think Blathers would have appreciated it if I ate the lowly octopus that they had on display. So instead, I walked over to the gum wall. Yes, it is a real attraction. And ate at a local pizza joint called the Alibi Room. I was really happy they had an all day happy hour menu because this trip was pricey. And I ended up getting the bruschetta appetizer, a mini personal pizza, and a mini spicy mac. Plus two alcohol beverages for two people. It was mwah, delicious, okay? Mwah, 
you don't wish yourself. Did I mention that I like food? If you are going to go to the alibi room, I highly recommend the bruschetta and the mini pizza. I would stay away from the mini spicy mac because even though it was really good for $8.50, the portion size was much less than desired. But that pizza though, that two people with the bruschetta, very good, very good. Like, after that, I spent the rest of the evening playing the provider board games in the Citizen in Hotel lobby before oh, passing out of yeah. Five fits. <laughs> that is not where you go, buddy. Five I won't bore you too much with my time on the second day since it was mostly me killing time until I could go to my train at 2 p.m. So I will briefly mention Skulka which is a Georgian pizza restaurant. I keep seeing people referring to it as pizza, but I don't actually know if it's pizza, but we'll go with a Georgian pizza restaurant. I enjoyed the food, but the atmosphere was not it. It was very robotic and very quiet in the restaurant. If you were going to eat there, I highly, highly, highly recommend getting, getting your food there, going to a local coffee shop and getting a coffee, and then going down to the pier and eating at the pier because the ambiance would be so much better. But the food was great. I've never had Georgian cuisine before. Thumbs up, two thumbs up, very good. I would definitely go back. After that, I grabbed coffee at one of my favorite local coffee shops, Monorail Espresso. Then I went in search of Bezos' balls, which I failed because I forget the city is multiple levels. How the fuck do you navigate that? But I ended up getting lost and instead I went to the Seattle library, which was nice. Just sat down, chilled in there, charged my phone because they have these nice little recliner seats. Did happen across this really cute Christmas display though. Found a little random surprise of cuteness out there. Very much enjoyed that. And there you have it. The adventure to Seattle is over. Did I think it was worth going to the Animal Crossing exhibit for me? Personally, no. I spent a bit under $500 for two days in Seattle in order to go to this event. The whole main focus of my trip was to go to Seattle Aquarium for this event. So you could say I was a little disappointed with what the actual event turned out to be. I was expecting a bit more of like a, like a oomph, you know, to the event more, more than just a few cardboard signs and cardboard cutouts, but maybe my expectations are too high. I'd never been to a Nintendo event like that before, so let me know if you think my expectations were too high, but like, if I was a Seattle local, I definitely think I would have not felt as disappointed. I would have definitely enjoyed it a lot more just because like, I would have been able to go straight home, ate my own food, just taking a trip down to the pier and went to the event and had, had fun for the day, you know? But because I'm not a Seattle local, I traveled in order to go to this event and I didn't even leave with any like exclusive merchandise that would have made it a bit better, you know? Cause none of the merchandise there was really exclusive. I'm dis, I'm, I was disappointed, okay? Seattle Aquarium though, awesome. Was the weekend as a whole a bust? Definitely not. I greatly enjoyed my time in Seattle overall. I had great food. The amount of time that I got to spend at the aquarium without getting bored was awesome. And the aquarium itself was really fun. And I got to see a lot of Seattle that I otherwise wouldn't normally have gone to since I normally only go for soccer con. TLDR, don't travel for the Animal Crossing exhibit. If you're a Seattle local, I definitely recommend checking it out on the weekend so that you can go enjoy the stamp rally as well as just go hang out at the aquarium for the day, make a whole day out of it. If you've gone to the Animal Crossing event or managed to go to the stamp rally, please let me know down in the comments below what your thoughts was it. Like the video if you enjoyed and make sure to subscribe. If you wanna see more, I make cosplay, gaming slash anime and crafting related content. I'm trying to release at least one video a month right now, but that is my goal for 2024. I need to go and start on my soccer con cosplay. So I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.